Well, hello, and welcome to the Building Business Podcast, powered by the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. We're recording in the Charleston Radio Group Studios, who, of course, are a huge supporter of the Chamber with our friend Brian Cleary, the best mixer master of all of our podcasts. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Kathy Herman here. Um, I am the current president of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. I'm also the marketing director for Mount Pleasant Town Center. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. And I have a, a really special co-host here with me today. I'm so excited. Uh, Darius Kelly. He is the owner of Darius Kelly Design and a current member of the Chamber Marketing Committee. Darius, welcome. Uh, Darius, um, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm actually a local here in Charleston, so it's not many of us still around. <laughs> um, but I've had my business for about five years now. Um, I'm a avid uh, Steelers fan, and I'm so excited to be here with our guest, and I'm ready to get this started. I I met her very early on when I moved here in 2018 in a completely different, 2016, I'm sorry, in a completely different capacity, um, which is always so funny, but I always clearly remember the first people that I met when I moved here. So I'm really excited that she's here with us today. Uh, she is the president and chief executive, sorry, chief creative officer uh, for Trio Solutions, which is a full service marketing communications agency based right here in our beloved Mount Pleasant. Please welcome everyone, Jenny Dennis. Hello, good afternoon. Um, Jenny, we're so excited to have you here. Um, again, I, we met in a different capacity a long, long time ago, and I'm so excited about what, you, what you're doing with Trio Solutions. Um, so let's get started, as we always do, with a little bit about your background and what led you to Trio Solutions. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was, in terms of background, I was born and raised in New England. I'm a, a New Hampshire girl. I'm sorry, I'm not a Steelers fan. No, it's fine. <laughs> but, um, and, you know, I did sort of the non traditional college route. So I did not come out of high school and just do the four years. I did it, you know, over time. Um, I actually, when I graduated high school, I moved all the way to California because I thought I was going to be like this really cool, you know, hey, I I'm not going to be bound by living in New Hampshire in a small town. I'm going all the way to California. And I wasn't trying to be an actress or anything, but I definitely had some dreams and some goals and some things. And so, um, believe it or not, I started my classes in biology, which has nothing to do with marketing at all. Funny and story. It is a funny <laughs> story. <laughs> and so, um, as I was taking these classes, I also worked in restaurants. So I did my waitressing and I was a bartender and all of that. And then um, about two years into it, my dad got really sick, unfortunately, and that caused me to want to move back home. And so I moved back to the East Coast and I got a job at a fine dining restaurant. And I had, um, I only worked at the bar and I had these two guys, um, their names were uh, Kevin Tracy and uh, uh, John Edwards. And they would come in almost every weeknight and they were my regulars and they owned an ad agency. And so we would get to talking and they would always watch me like upsell the wine list and just really be an advocate for the restaurant and so good with the customers and all that stuff. And so one day they were like, have you ever thought about a career in advertising? And I was like, absolutely not. I definitely have not <laughs> nope. thought about that. Yeah. And so uh, long story short, they continued to kind of court me in this idea. And they said, just come in and see what we do. I, I think there's a place for you at our agency. So I did go in. I ended up working with them. I changed the biology major and sort of the rest is is history. But um, yeah, that was my first agency job, my first insight into marketing. And really um, when I decided that I liked this and wanted to do more of it. Well, so. apparently you were born with it, right? Because you were doing it at the bar. Yes. Before you even knew that you were doing it's it true. at the bar. It's true. Um, so fast forward, I moved to, to um, Charleston in 2007 and I was a stay-at-home mom when I moved here um, I moved here <laughs> my I was eight months pregnant with my second daughter and so um, you know I stayed home for about a year or two but while I was staying home I was also a group exercise instructor and I worked at St. Andrew's Family Fitness in West Ashley and every month I would see this rack of skirt magazines and I loved skirt magazine. Like I thought it was the coolest thing. I just loved how it was oversized and all the graphics and how the kitschy copy and the ads. I loved this magazine. And so as usual, I picked up my copy, I open it up and there's this giant full page ad that they're looking to hire. And I came home and I told my husband, I was like, I'm ready to go back to work. 
And he was like, really? And I said, yep, I want to work for Skirt Magazine. <laughs> and so I applied for the job. And literally, like, the next day, they called me in for an interview. And I remember it was, like, conference room style interview, everybody sitting around the table. And I ended up getting the job. Uh, it's crazy because I'm not from Charleston. I really didn't have a network at the time. I didn't even know anybody. I moved here and I was a stay-at-home mom who taught step aerobics. Like I had no <laughs> no inside like network or circle but of you influence. You know, sometimes that's not a bad way to start fresh, <laughs> yeah, right? And, yeah. it gets you, and, it, and you meet people yes, that way, having to get out and, pa- and pound the pavement to find clients. Yeah, so uh, you know, I started selling ads at Skirt um, and I think that's really helped in positioning me for the role that I have now because I've been on both sides of the aisle. You know, I've sold media and I now, you know, help create media. So it's two different sides there. Um, I had a really, really great run at Skirt. I loved every minute of it. I worked there for about eight years. I, you know, moved up from ad sales rep to associate publisher. I eventually got the privilege of being the publisher after Nikki Harden, who is the founder of Skirt, retired. You know, she made an amazing, wonderful product. And I'm so glad that I got to be a part of that story. And then um, it was time for me to go. The company that Nikki had sold the magazine to, they had, you know, we just sort of had a difference of opinion on what direction the magazine should take. And I decided that it was time for me to go. And um, ironically, Jessica Monday, who is the founder and CEO of Trio, uh, she had, Trio had some clients that would run ads in Skirt. And so I did the typical, you know, when you leave a job, you kind of send out that like email from your personal email yeah. that says like hey, guess where i'm going yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm, leaving. I'm looking for a job yeah. um, and i did not have another job lined up and so jessica received that email that i sent out to a small group of people and about two weeks after i left skirt i got a um a call from jessica and she said hey would you like to have lunch with me and i was like sure so i went and i had lunch with her and she said you know i'm doing amazing things at trio but i need help running this i want to scale it i want to grow it and you know, would you be interested in coming and helping me run my agency? And I said yes. And here we are, seven years later. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a big difference from yeah. working at Skirt Magazine and doing that versus helping build a, a marketing agency. What was that change of scope like for you? It was actually very exciting. You know, I I truly believe that to be successful in this type of business, you have to see change as an opportunity and not as a threat. And so, um, I really embraced it. Uh, I, Jessica is a wonderful, wonderful business owner and just a great boss. Um, she cares so deeply about the team and about our culture, and she wants you to have the professional development that you need. One of the things that she invested in me um, very early on was a leadership coach. That was a game changer for me. It really helps you identify all of your blind spots, which a lot of them are more blind than you think they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, that helped me to be able to cultivate these relationships, to be able to step into the role of president, because I was not hired as the president. I was hired as the COO, and she was the CEO and president. And then over time, you know, we hired another person here and another person there. And in the seven years that I've been here, we have doubled in size, meaning um, our team, and we've also doubled in revenue. So. That's important too, um, right? There. And we did it together. Yeah. I certainly do not take all the credit for that, but we are, we truly are something special. I do think of us as the dynamic duo for sure. So for the businesses that are listening um, to us today, Jenny, I, some of them will always, and I'm, again, I've been marketing since I got out of college a very, very, very long time ago. Um, so I always knew, I actually went to school for marketing is what I wanted to do because I was always kind of that person that was out there and whatever. But there are still businesses out there that say, I don't need marketing. Yeah. Right. So before we even tackle that subject, which is I've got a, a lot to say, about a that. very <laughs> unsmart way to think, by the way, um, Trio, we, we keep talking about Trio Solutions. So take this opportunity to let our listeners know um, what type of services your agency provides. Um, you know, we keep yeah. saying full service marketing. What does that mean? That's a good question. Um, and let's and let's explain to them the important. Yeah, we'll do that first, and then we'll then we'll tackle about why you need marketing. <laughs> Yeah, well, for us, for full service means we do uh, a little of a lot of things. You know, a lot of times I even shared, as I was telling you, kind of my coming up story, I use the word advertising. Marketing is not synonymous with advertising. It's so much more than that. And especially now where we have all of the technology and this entire like, you know, user experience and customer experience and all all that uh, the world is offering us. It's not just, oh, well, do you have a logo? Oh, do you have a tagline? Oh, do you have a website? It's like, what is 
every single thing that you are putting out into the world is some sort of message. And if you're putting nothing out, that's also a message. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about full service, it means not just we do all of the services that fall under the giant umbrella that we would call marketing, but it's also full service in the relationship and the way that we want to come alongside and partner with our clients and our colleagues. And so for us, ideally, like an ideal client for us is someone who really is looking for someone to collaborate with and someone that wants to have a plan and we want to execute that plan together and be adaptable and change and optimize and monitor and do all of those things. Uh, I'm not a fan of the spaghetti model. Uh, it doesn't work for the weathermen. It doesn't work for marketing. What um, is the spaghetti model? Just throw stuff at the wall and see what okay, works. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old lady term that yeah. we use. All right, I just Darius, dated myself. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I, knew, sorry. I knew exactly yeah. what Jenny meant, yeah. but the younger, the younger generation we need you might to not. Yeah, you know, so yeah. somebody. Yeah. That's a great little... question, Darius, because now everyone else would need to, you know, now they'll know the answer <laughs> yeah. to that question. But that used to be the way marketing was. Be like, all right, you'd sit down with a client, because I've been on kind of mm -hmm. both sides myself. And it would just be like, well, let's let's just try everything and see what works. Now, and how ironic, right, that all three of us are in the marketing industry, which I think is great, which I'm so happy the three of us are here today. But now it's so, it could be, it's so targeted. It's such a collaborative effort with the client. I remember just sitting in an office and the, and the advertising agency would come and just present stuff to us. Um, and my boss, boss, boss at the time would be like, yes, no, yes, no. I mean, they never asked us. Yeah. Right back in the day, that was if she was it was their job to come up with it. Yeah. Um, so I love that you brought up the, how important it is to be collaborative with the clients. But well, um, and also back in the day, you didn't have access to the data like you have today. Right. Now it was kind of like, all right, yes, there was some information on how many cars were on the road if you had a billboard up, or what the circulation or the readership was if you had you know a print ad, or what the listenership was if you had a radio ad. All those types of things and the reach, but nowhere near what we've got access to now with right. data and of course there was no social media and you know that's just things. another uh, yeah total yeah. animal so it's interesting it's come a long way but i i've enjoyed watching this evolution you know and i think it's really cool to say that we are part of something old school and something new and innovative and exciting so, so what this do you, is going to be your old school. Yeah, yeah. That's I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to meet again here in about 20 years. Yeah. And then we're going to find out the And then I'll be able now. to tell people what the spaghetti model is. Yeah. And then we bring this all full circle. Back in the day, exactly. they used to do the spaghetti mm -hmm. model. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. But, but seriously, let's touch base about this question about marketing too. Because um, I, I've unfortunately met many businesses in my career um, and recently too. I'm just going to build it and they're going to come and if they don't, then they're silly or, and they, for whether it's budgets or old fashioned belief, whatever it might be, um, I, I try my best to explain that that's just not the way that it works. And of course you both know this being in, in, in the marketing world. Um, what are, um, some tips and I'd love to hear from both of you actually tips on what we can share with our listeners Maybe um, besides hiring an amazing marketing firm, we could, we're going to touch base about that later. But what are some things they could do on their own, perhaps, um, that are easier to do for people who are not so marketing minded? Yeah. Would you like to go first? I guess. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would say the first thing would be just to educate yourself. Um, I've come in contact with businesses and they don't even have the understanding of what a marketing strategy is or how to go about creating a campaign or even just a design aspect and why all of those things are important in marketing as a whole and even getting that message out. So I would always tell people, um, educate yourself, probably uh, go on Google and just do some research just to have a basic understanding because when you're meeting with a trio solutions, for example, mm -hmm. that would help them better understand how to help you and to get your story out there and help your business grow. Yeah. No, I totally agree. You know, I always <clears throat> tell people, like, ask the pros. You know, I, I might be a pro in marketing, but I think Steve Forbes is a pretty good, like, you know, you should take take advice from him. I think <laughs> Forbes is sort of synonymous with money. And most people are, you know, running businesses. Yes, they want to make an impact and they want to make a difference, but they also want to make money. Even mm -hmm. if you're a nonprofit, you still have to run that like a business and you have to have money to be able to make a larger impact and serve the community. Right. So, um, but Steve Forbes says that the single most important investment you can make in your business is your brand. 
period. Right. And so what people don't realize is that your brand is not just, oh, did I run an ad or am I on Facebook? Your brand is also how people answer the phone. If you have a brick and mortar, the experience that they have with your salespeople, if you are you know, mailing them something or if they're purchasing something from your Shopify website, it's the packaging. It's every little aspect of any interaction and engagement that someone has with your business. Mm -hmm. That is what marketing can capture. And so you've got to, at some point, whether you're using a professional agency, whether you're trying to self-implement and do it yourself, and lots of people can do that and be successful, or whether you're not doing it at all, you're still marketing. Well, and also in the age of social media, one bad review, one bad note about either your restaurant or your store and everything goes viral. And it can, I mean, it can really affect you. Um, you have to be prepared to handle yeah. all those things. And again, I've I've talked with some people who are like, oh, I don't read my reviews or, oh, I don't. And I'm like, I, you know, my mind is blown. I said, how do you how do you expect to be successful and, and still be around in a year if you're not addressing anything that's important to people? And especially in especially in Mount Pleasant, we all know there's lots of choices in this town. And so, you know, I could go to restaurant A that I've always had a great meal and this and that, and, you know, the, the service is great. The the reviews are great. Or I could go to restaurant B, which is the opposite. And I choose to spend my money at A. I'm not going back to B. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I think people just assume, oh, people are just going to come. And it's, it's not the way it works anymore. It's not. And you were asking, like, you know, what are some tips or some tools that people can use? And I think even with when it comes to um, reviews and being um, – open to hearing what the consumers are saying about your business, especially on the local level, it is really important. And there's so much out there. Now. You know, I'm not even sure if we're going to get into the whole AI conversation. I feel like it's, uh, you know, that could be a whole it, another it podcast. Could, I it think. could, but part two of your finale is yeah, AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's probably AI out, AI out there that we wouldn't even have to show up and we could just have yeah. a podcast. Yeah. podcast Brian, find my voice on exactly AI and let's just us. ask it some yeah, questions. Exactly. Um, but the reason I say that is because it is really amazing the capabilities and the opportunities for people to come out and do things on their own. And we have vetted a lot of those. I'm mm -hmm. sure you have too. You know, it's the canvas and the the sites where you can build your own website and all of the the tools and technology out there. But the one thing that we've noticed at Tria when people have come to us and said, hey, well, I did this on my own or I used certain tool to to get a certain result, it can always be improved by someone that has professional knowledge on how to use that. And so those are a great, great start starting point for people. It's a great um, opportunity for folks that might not have a huge budget, mm -hmm. but they still, I highly recommend that they partner with somebody. It doesn't mean you have to go hire a full service agency like Trio, but partner with somebody like when you talked about educating yourself yeah. so that you can get the most out of that tool that you're investing in. Right. That's really where you're gonna see the differentiator because everyone's trying to use those tools. Everybody's trying to do those things. Are you seeing um, in your time at Trio, um, especially nowadays, like you talk about the Canva and the AI, are you seeing similarities in like the challenges that those businesses are having when they're saying, oh, I just, oh yeah, I did this logo on my, by myself or I did this website quickly by myself. Do you think that's a challenge when they're I trying do. to like, differentiate themselves because like a new business is started every day so yes um i do i think that for the businesses that are a little more scrappy and they and they survive and they make it through that like you know sort of um, volatile time of trying to be successful a lot of times what we see is then they come to us and say okay well i'm ready for a rebrand right or i need a new website because what they did in the beginning it's kind of like a house of cards you know it's not going to sustain them it's not going to help them really scale their business or take it to the next level it was maybe like what they needed to do to get that starting point point. and you know there is there's always a good time to partner with someone who's professional in marketing. It can be before you start, like in that, you know, ideation phase. It can be in the startup phase. Mm -hmm. It can be you're five years old. It can be you're 25 years old in the business. There's always an opportunity and a need to have professional partners. But, but I also think it's funny. We were just saying before how important the brand is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is everything is the brand. I, I And for some of the some companies who 
incorrectly think that they can make like the perfect brand or their perfect logo. And I'm not saying anything bad about all my company. I love all my businesses. What I'm saying is that this is that from the start yeah. to me is the time to get the professional help. Yeah. Because also, you know, you could put something out there and maybe not have the ability to do an appropriate Google search to find out, does somebody else have that logo? Does somebody right. else have that name? And are they right down the street? Yeah. You know? Um, and so I, Starting from the beginning to me makes the most sense, but I understand that you know maybe they could start and then figure well, out that they need they need a I'll, little refresh. You make a really good point because the reality is is that there's a lot more that goes into having developing that brand besides just the logo or even the name. And you you do have to register with the Secretary of State, and you do need to make sure that you know the URL is available and the social handles are available, and that there isn't someone else with the same business name. You know, even in another country, you know that that can be the case now, especially with access to the internet like we yeah. have, and mm -hmm. everybody being able to do business globally. Um, so yes, you're absolutely right. In a perfect scenario, ideally, people would come to us first and let us help them understand why are you in business? What is it that you want your business to represent? Right. And how can we best communicate that to the audience that you're trying to target? So I, how would, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I would tell a funny, little funny antidote. Yeah. I went to type in to find an Instagram account not that long ago. I missed one letter. Mm. And it brought me to a site that nobody wants to go to. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had that. Right? Thing. So, yeah. I mean, be careful. I mean, look, yes. you know, look into that stuff. I mean, I only missed one little letter, right? Yeah. So we always want to keep that in mind. I didn't mean to yes. interrupt Darius. No, but I was just fine. thinking about that the other day and kind of I popped on. I'm like, are the alarms on my computer, <laughs> my corporate security going to go bananas? I didn't mean to type this in. Um, I, I was just going to ask you to kind of give a little bit of background and a description on what branding really is. Um, for those out there who do have a business, and I hear all these buzzwords like branding and marketing and SEO, et cetera, but what is a brand? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the brand is basically the the essence of the business. It is when that entrepreneur or that group of people or that you know um, other business decided, hey, we're going to we have a product or a service that we are going to bring to the marketplace. In addition to that, you can have a personal brand, but we'll put that right. to the side for a second. But really, it's the entire package. So it, it is the name. It is the way that it makes someone feel. It's the emotional response that you want people to have when they hear your brand, engage with your brand, or interact with your brand. Um, it's the visual aesthetic of it. It's the tone. It's the voice. It's it's all encompassing. It's really how you show up in the marketplace, how you want to speak to people. And you really need to have alignment with the values of your brand and yourself. Because if you uh, don't have any kind of synergy with what you want to open as a business, you're going to find it, I believe, a struggle to serve those people oh, because what we see time and time again is people come into trio and they want to put their personal preference on whatever it is that we're doing yep. a billboard design you know mm -hmm. a color palette a font choice and it's like okay if you are a 50 year old woman and you like this you know more feminine style font but your product is serving teenage boys yeah. it doesn't, doesn't matter work. if you exactly. like that you exactly. know what i mean and so i think people need to realize that the brand is the message that you want how you want to be received in the, the world the company be received the, not the company not received. the personal or the product yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. yeah. well i've always said people always ask me all the time because i've been doing marketing so long about sales and things and i you know because i i've been actually working in shopping centers my whole career um and so I, I was lucky enough to find something that I adored, right? But I would not be successful if I had to sell staples or, right. uh, yeah. you know, recording equipment, like something that doesn't interest me, um, I couldn't sell. And it really is exactly like, it's the same concept, thinking that just because I like it doesn't mean you like it. That's right. And if you want your, your business to be successful, you need to make sure it's targeted to the people that you're trying to sell it to. Yeah, I would say like my three fundamental things that are so important, like when developing something like that, whether it's a brand or a marketing campaign or initiative or anything is like knowing your why. We do a great, um, we offer a great service. It's like a one day workshop where companies can come in and we can really help them do a deep dive to understand like 
what is your mission? And and if you don't have a mission statement, it can be like, what is your purpose, your cause, your passion? Like, why do you exist in the world? And then it's like, from a value standpoint, a lot of people say, well, we're a values-based organization, or they may have their values like on, you know, a plaque on the wall or something like that. And that's really important. But the whole point of the values is to make sure that the internal people that you're working with and the people that you serve, there's alignment in those values, because that's how you hire, that's how you fire, that's how you make decisions, that's how you do you you operate your co- your company so you have this like outward facing mission or purpose that you're you're emulating to the world but then you have this values in the system and the way that you operate behind closed doors that then spills out to how the world receives that mission that you're trying to accomplish. So um, we do a mission, vision, and values workshop where we will bring clients in and we'll say, and it doesn't matter. Again, hopefully you're doing something like this from the get-go, but a lot of times you're not. And then you realize, hey, why are we struggling or why are we missing the mark or what could it be? Mm -hmm. If you can really solidify those things, it helps with your messaging right. because you just keep referring back to that. Like stay in your lane. You cannot be all things to all people. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's what people try to do. And they try to serve and pivot and do all these things. And it's like, no, be true to what your brand is. I think that's really important, especially once you come up with, this is what my brand values are. This is the look. This is how we communicate and just being consistent. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, that's a big thing that I've seen working with companies and just that consistency to what our values are. If you keep changing too much, I think people either lose interest, they don't really know what you are or what you're trying to say, yep. and that could be annoying yep. and, and frustrating to you know to potential customers like me. I'm like, is it a car dealership or is it a you know a moped store? Whatever it yeah. might be. Yeah. And you can't do that. You Like Darius just said, it's it's that consistency that's really important. And it's kind of, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, we've all heard that statement, like we have the attention span of a goldfish or something. Which I is have like a gnat. Mine's a gnat. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You know, the goldfish is a little better looking, I think. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's what, seven seconds or something like that. And so you have to be careful because, yes, you want to make sure that you're captivating the audience, but the way to do that is that brand recognition. And if you're constantly changing yep. and you're constantly utilizing, no misutilizing tools right. like the canvas and these other things where you're just opening it and going, oh, that's a cool template. I'll use that. And then the next week you go to do your social media and you're like, that's a cool template. Let me use that. The two have nothing to do with one another and you're just causing brand confusion and you're not building a loyal customer base and you're not building people that are going to be your best advertising source out there, which yep. is referral right. and, mm-hmm. and review. And so if you can't build that, then, you know, you're going to And then struggle. you get a, a negative shock appeal, kind of like Kathy going to the wrong Instagram account by accident. It's right. like, yeah. oh, I thought this was a fishing company, but <laughs> yeah. but none of the, the posts don't even look anything yeah. that that it fits that brand. So um, just piggybacking off of that, what can somebody do to establish, you know, this is my brand, this is my marketing, this is how I communicate. What, how do they go about establishing that? Yeah, I think you really have to take the time. There, There's a lot of, um, you know, DIY things out there. But if someone were to come to us from the startup phase and say, hey, we want to develop a brand, we start by doing something we call a discovery call. And you really sit down, there's a questionnaire that we send to them ahead of time and really make the person think, because here's the thing, the business owner needs to know the brand better than we do, right? right. And sometimes course, people yeah. come and we ask them questions and they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, You're I don't the expert. Know. And it's like, if you don't know, <laughs> then how do you expect the customers <laughs> right. to know, right? right. Yeah. And so, you, of course, we want to be a sponge. We want to learn as much as we possibly can about the industry of whoever the client you know, that we're serving is in. But they have to be able to come and be able to articulate and identify what it is that they're doing. So I would say in the in the brand development phase, the number one most important thing is to really understand what problem are you solving? Why are you creating this product? Why are you creating this service? What does it do? What does it mean? What is the impact that it can have? Who is it going to help? Who can you serve? If you can get really crystal clear on those types of things, then that gives you the foundation to start building things. Okay, well, we know why we exist. We know what problem we solve, and we know who has that problem that needs us to solve it. Now let's go find those people. Let's go talk to them. Let's see where they're at and what platforms they're on and that kind of stuff. And even in that, let's say we establish 
I come in and I have all of those things figured out. Mm -hmm. I think the next stage of that is why having a professional is so important because when things change in the market, you need somebody to help you navigate. Right. Yes. And then, like, how do I stay consistent to who I am, but then pivot a little bit just so that I'm staying in the right lane? Like, I don't, like, for example, I'm not, I don't want to be political, but, like, wearing a red hat had a different meaning once that mm. occurred. So just how do you navigate just the little things? Yeah. Well, I think the next phase after that is really y your name. You know, like, what is the name that you're going to use? Sometimes there's a whole process in just developing the name of a business or an organization. And then it's like, what is the visual identity, right. which we talked about, which is all those aesthetics, colors and fonts and logos and all of that cool stuff. And then it's like, OK, where do you want to have a presence? And I think for as far as the navigating part, you really have to establish where you want to be and then you got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You really have to listen and you can't just set it and forget it. You can't be, you know, in marketing, autopilot is not a good idea. So many times people will come in and say, well, yeah, I'm running Facebook ads or I'm running Google ads and they're just, they're not, you know, maintaining it. They're not monitoring it and they're just letting it run on autopilot. And in the beginning, that might work well for some folks, but I do think that there's always opportunity and especially with these technology platforms, they're changing the al algorithms. They're evolving. They're changing the specs. They're making it so much work now to get it your ads, even though you're paying. They're it's making it so much harder to get your ad seen. And if you just, the one thing that we are finding a challenge right now, especially in serving our clients, is if you're on the social platforms, there's so many different specs. You could have an ad in stories. You could have an ad in reels. You could have an ad as a static post. You could have a carousel. You can have all these things, but they all require different specs. And what happens is if you just put, put them in there and you don't pay attention to that right. or the character count of how many words you're allowed to have in that post. They just changed it. It was 125 characters. Now it's 80 characters. So all these people that have messages out there that were 125 characters long, they're being cut off and truncated. And if they don't know that, right. then they're out of luck. But well, do you remember when Instagram first came out and it was, I don't know, it was like one or two lines? Remember, like that was the big thing. It's yes. just like the best. It thing was is, photos only. Yeah, the actually, best thing. Yeah, the best thing about Instagram was it was only pictures, and yeah. like it w people would only write like a sentence. Yeah. And then I guess whatever changed, and now I mean, some of them are like uh, almost novel length. But know. you know, I'm um, speaking of like keeping up with all these new things, though, because I, when I started, there was none of this. Yes, obviously, same. I mean, we. It, I don't they didn't even have email. Anyway, <laughs> I that's, how, that's how old I am. <laughs> oh, I um, picked up the phone a lot. Yeah, I did yeah. a lot of the phone. Um, Can't but, relate. <laughs> have you heard or can you share anything that you've heard about um, any kind of new future marketing sh things that, that yeah. are coming around? Like, you know, I know TikTok is, I can't watch it. I can't, I can't. Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. Well, I can't do it. But. I think even outside of social media, you know, there's a lot of even talk. better, please. Anything <laughs> outside of social is even better. <laughs> well, I think we've also seen the commercials that there's a lot of this AR and VR technology out there, which, you know, to be honest, we have not dabbled a lot in that. Keep in mind that the things that we see out in the forefront and the things, the cool Apple commercials that we see or the Super Bowl commercials or the amazing, uh, interesting things we see on TikTok those are the early adopters, right? And right. so like, we're not going to get into the whole like college level marketing course, but most people, it's going to take quite some time for them to get caught up to that. Even AI, you know, yes, a lot of folks are using chat GPT or some version of that to do certain things in their work, but there's so much more opportunity there. And the average, my husband doesn't even know what that is. Like, you know, so I think it just depends on where, what industry you're in mm -hmm. and what kind of job you have if you're implementing those tools. But I guarantee you, you know, more than half the planet isn't using this stuff. And so when you think about it in that regard, there's still a long way for us to go. But I do think that I also think, you know, how long now I'm giving a, a I'm admitting something. Hmm. I prefer to talk to text. I don't like to type. I kind of am going blind. My thumbs are big <laughs> and weird. And I'm always like, then I get autocorrect. And then I'm like calling my daughter Gracie gravy. And it's just like, it's not, it doesn't work out. So I talk to text, but I think that's just one small example of like being able to do voice activated commands. You know, the whole chat bot thing, how much that has evolved and how much smaller, uh, uh, 
uh, better and adaptive and predictable those things have gone. So I think it's taking the stuff that we have, like when you say futuristic, I, I know it's coming. We've seen the Apple commercials where we're just going to walk around like Iron Man and have, yeah. Wait, know, Are they really going to implant it so, in my head or something? I, I, that might, hopefully we're doing I'm, Yeah, I'm not going to be around for that. <laughs> I, I really, really I don't, don't want to I'm fighting that. that as long you, as I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that, could, that could be a possibility. But I'm just talking about the fact of being able to see you know, you don't need to look at a little tablet or a little phone screen anymore. It's just there in the universe. You're the, scaring me, Jenny. Yeah. I don't want to know anything about this. That's that technology it definitely it, it exists. probably exists. It does right? exist, and it's it right. Is. It's right on our heels for sure. <sighs> but I, I still think I we got that. a little runway before we it's, do. I, uh, we better, <laughs> and it's not accessible for everybody. <laughs> right. That's the other thing too. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like you know a Tesla or a rocket ship ride to the moon. Yeah, you could go, but it's not accessible to everybody. Yeah, that's not it's not realistic. mainstream yet. No, so. no, not at all. Yeah. That's um, that's a lot. That's pretty heavy. It is. It is, but... It is, but you also, you have, there's one of two ways we can look at this, right? Well, we people love like, it. Listen, yeah. my, I mean, my, I, I work in a shopping center, so, you know, my, uh, my target market would love that more than life itself. And uh, they probably actually love just being able to walk into a store and point at something and have it thrown in their car. Whatever we can do yeah. with this, because well, that, that's the it's age It's like group, Amazon. Though. That's exactly They're what I was going to say. It. When they you go to, to the airport, yeah. Yeah. you just, like, I just did it the other day for the first time. I don't remember. Where was I flying out of? Anyways, I, wa I went in and it just says, scan your credit card, and then you walk in the store, get whatever you want, and you just walk out. And it automatically yeah. takes it yeah, out of Yeah, I did that account. for the first time the other day. Chicago. How'd it feel? I was in Chicago. It was weird. Weird, right? It was weird, but it was kind of like, I it was nice for that. when I walk out. <laughs> was, I don't even like self-service nice. because I feel like I'm not paying for things. Oh, I love you, Skin. Yeah. I'm sure. I yeah. love I you, Skin. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I well, it is yeah. quicker. It is, it is much quicker. <laughs> I'll but, do it with a lot. I'll just take my big buggy and. <laughs> See, I just feel bad for the people being paid that they can't, they don't, I don't know. Well, I used to work in Bring up my groceries so. for me. The good Enjoy. news is, is that this has been happening since the beginning of time where things will evolve and it does seem like, wow, you know, robots are coming for our jobs or whatever these things are. But no, we just come up with new jobs. You know what I mean? And I, and that is literally the, the history of the human well, world. Well, we're, we're almost the same age. I'm a little older than you, but I remember the, the first cell phones. Yeah. Right? I mean, not yeah. the big gigantic ones. My the husband, ones in the bag. My <laughs> husband had one of those because he's a little bit older than me. But I mean, literally, they went from big to small to big to small, and now they're back big. And I remember getting the first one that I could touch, and it just kept ringing all the time because I kept hitting it on my ear. And like the progress that was made yeah. um, in the last, what, I guess 25, 30 years, whatever long it's been. And now look at us. Yeah. Well, but, I guess those were dumb but, phones. Now right. we have smartphones. Yeah. Smart <laughs> but now, I mean, everyone just takes it for granted now. Like back then, it was a huge, I remember having a cell phone, my mom wanted me to get her one and I was just like what do you want a cell phone well I, you know I just want to be hip and I'm like okay you know, you're, 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 <laughs> well now it's beyond being hip exactly it's literally now a necessity you can't yeah. without to it. live I right. know it is sad I, w I was on a cruise and I was so upset because I when I went on vacation I like to not be connected I I, I leave my work phone at home I have two phones I have my yeah. work phone and my personal phone I leave my work phone at home I have my personal phone don't put it on except I have to check. I had to check for the cats, and that was really the only time I, I used it. I went to go have breakfast at one of the restaurants, and the and I had I had to make a reservation through the app uh, on my phone. Yeah, to have breakfast. You can't be unplugged anymore. And I I looked at the woman. I was I'm a nice person. I looked at her. And I go. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. I said, but I'm on vacation. I don't want my phone. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm here, and she goes, it's the only way we can get you. I had to go back to my room. Mm. Get my phone out of the safe because I don't even carry it with me. Yeah, and make a friend. so that kind Good of stuff. Good for you though for unplugging well, I, like that. I have to, or else I'll just lose yeah. my mind. Yeah. Um, but those technology, I mean, that's 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 what's working right now though. Um, and and it does really as a marketing person. Um, I mean, it it helps. I yeah. mean, these the the way the way the way the world these days of getting your your word out and your brand out. Um, it's it's amazing actually. Um, all the different ways that you can do it and get it out there. But if there are like, I don't know, your top three tips for a new business, Jenny, about well, getting things started or, you know, just getting the word out. Do you have any any insight on that? Or what would you say would be like the top three things a company should do? Well, I do think in this digital age, it really depends on, you know, what it is, the service or the um, product that you're launching but I will say, what is the first thing when you hear about anything? What's mm -hmm. the first thing you do? 
Google, Google it. it. You Google it. That's yeah. right. Can you believe it, people Google, People are not on Google yet? I mean, businesses aren't on Google. I'm like, I said, I tried to Google you. And they're like, oh, yeah, we got to work on that. I'm like, you, you, you do that you before you even <laughs> yeah. like, do anything else. You get yourself yeah. on Google. Um, so I do believe that that is just, it has become second nature for us. That everyone, no matter who you are, what your background is, what your income level is, whatever it is the first thing you do is you Google that. And so I do believe that having a website, even if it's a web page, even if you don't have something that's like, you know, really robust and fancy, but something that's done well Mm -hmm. and really speaks to, okay, like I said, those three things, know your why, know who that audience is and have some kind of plan. I think you have to do, do that. I actually am more of the fan of let's have a website before we have the social media. I know there's a lot of brands out there that they just exist purely on social media and that's okay too. Um, But if you're doing that, make sure that you're doing it well, make sure that you're building credibility, make sure that you're responding to your customers, you know, whether it's through. That's a full time job too. Don't even, I mean, social media management. That's another thing that I think people don't realize. They say, Oh, well we want someone to run our social media. That's time consuming. It's more than just making posts. It's very time consuming. <laughs> well, if you just make posts, then you're not. People forget that the word social yep. comes in front of media. Yeah. It's not, hey, let me just throw up everything that I want to say about myself and yeah. hope that you like yeah. it and do something. And That's not social media. not how it works. works. It's a two-way street. It's yeah. a relationship. It's reciprocal. There's engagement. And you've got to be involved in that. Just posting. And if you think that just doing organic posts is going to do anything for you, that those days. Especially if you're not, like you said, being social, yes. liking other people's yes. posts, commenting. Exactly. You know. Um, and you've got to be creating engaging content, right. you know. Do you know? I mean, it, it could take a day to do a five second reel. It, depending, I, yeah. You sometimes know? Um, I do think that there's also an influx in. You know, I have uh, a lot of great friends that are influencers, but I do think that influencer marketing is something that, when you talk about the future, I do think that that is here to stay for a while. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to continue to grow and evolve. Um, you know, whether that's hey, we want this influencer to come and you know have dinner at our restaurant and talk about it, or wear our clothes and you know show show the pictures or the videos out on the town. I think that that really does have a large impact on mm-hmm. um, followings and, and audiences. So I think that's So just to kind of go back, I know you didn't go to California to be an actor or actress. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> but if you could pick an actor or actress to be an influencer mar- marketer for, let's say, Trio. Who oh, would yeah. You, who would you pick? I, I know that for sure. And mm-hmm. I hope you. I hope when I say this, you know who he is. You're in marketing, so there's a good chance. Maybe. I would pick, <laughs> I would pick Seth Godin. You ever heard of I Seth do Godin? know okay. Seth Godin, yeah. yes. He's kind of like, well, these days he's probably the grandfather of marketing. <laughs> the father, <laughs> father of marketing. Sorry, Seth. Like he'd ever hear this or no. Hey, man, we're going to send it to we'll him. <laughs> Come on, Seth. Listen we'll to what Jenny will tell you about you. No, but he wrote a lot of really influential marketing books that, like I said, back in the day before we had podcasts, before we had webinars, I had to consume my marketing knowledge by reading an actual paper book. <laughs> Wow. You can believe, yeah. wow, uh, yes, exactly. And so I, he was very influential to me. I know Jessica does too. We actually have a couple of books that we require our team members to read as a part of like their onboarding process. Um, and so, you know, I just think that he really understands um, con- like the behaviors of consumers as well as what it takes to be a good entrepreneur and, and a, a smart marketing mm-hmm. person. And so, um, yeah, if, if he like, if he gave Trio a review or if he, gave us a referral that would be like we have arrived for Mm. sure do you have a favorite self quote i don't necessarily have a a self quote um you know i definitely have some some principles that i try i try to live by you know trio we run on something called eos have you guys ever heard of eos so okay that's okay eos stands for entrepreneurial operating system and it's basically a system that was devised to run small businesses it's not necessarily just for the marketing industry you can be in any industry Um, there's over 250,000 companies worldwide that are running on eos and um, it's something that jessica and i made the decision to start doing a couple of years back but eos sort of has this 
principle when you talk about how you run the business. And the whole point is to gain traction in the business by looking at these six key components. And I won't go too deep into that, but they do have a mantra about like living the EOS life. And the EOS life is doing what you love with people you love, being fairly compensated and having time to pursue other passions. And I feel like that's a really good, you know, nice, like people talk about work-life balance. I don't think that work-life balance is actually a thing these days. I think it's like work-life integration. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I would be lying if I said I'm not working when I'm waiting in line at the grocery store or <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing Listen, whatever. it just makes it easier to check, right? It makes yeah. it easier. Check now and uh, you don't have to worry about it later. But it also gives you more freedom, freedom. and flexibility right. to travel, to do things, to be there for your kids or to walk your dogs. We have tons of young folks in our office that they like to leave at lunch and let their dog out or, you know, those types of things. So I think, um, you know, it's really important to to have that sort of center of gravity where you're like, okay, this is this is why I get out of bed in the morning. This is why I do what I do. I do love what I do. And I think that is really important. I've been super blessed to have two really amazing jobs that I've I've just enjoyed so much. You mentioned before the word entrepreneurial. We were talking before the podcast yeah. that you're, I want, I want to say it incorrectly, how are you involved with the Harbor yes. Entrepreneurial so, Group? Um, and, and you said you had something there for small business. We do. So we were actually the very first tenants at the HEC when they opened it up um, on E. Wall Street. We love it. I, I kind of call it like adult college. I saw some guy like skateboarding in the parking lot the other day. Hackersack? Yeah. You remember those days? <laughs> well, hey, you'd be surprised. But there's, there's all sorts of cool industries. I heard the other day that we've got 60, 61, 62 different companies in that building, which is amazing. But Trio was the first one. And we're one of the larger ones. And so we kind of have our own little wing up on the second floor. But we took one of the spaces that we leased and we converted it into this really um, cool creative lab where people can execute in, and bring their visions to life, whether they want to do something like this, you know, record a podcast, whether they want to take um, product shots or headshots for their website or their social media or their um Uh, content. We can do video. We can record, you know, like talking head videos. We can record videos for nonprofits. We can do um, all sorts of reels and TikToks. And it's really meant to be for someone like, okay, we're very fortunate that we're sitting here in this professional space and we have, you know, professional talent that's able to do these things for us. But this is not accessible. Right. Everybody can't just come well, to the because, Charleston radio. Well, group. that's because they're not the Mount Pleasant yeah, Chamber right, of Commerce. Right. That's why. Right. But, but if they join the Mount Pleasant <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, make sure you see us about membership. Continue. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of, you know, the free COVID really, we saw a huge resurgence in um, the freelance population. And so there's a lot of folks out there that want to be able to produce content and they don't have the means or the resources to do it. And so we saw this as a need for some of our own clients, but then we saw the opportunity to open up to, to our community. And so it's a, a it's a great resource that we have at the Harbor Entrepreneur Center. Um, we are doing a soft launch uh, for this uh, coming up very shortly. We will definitely be sure to share it with the Mount Pleasant Chamber, but there will be a, a web page. We will follow our own advice. We will have the right <laughs> web page and the right social media and all of the things, but um, it's an affordable way for people to do that. We've, we've soundproofed it. We've blacked out the windows. So there's no artificial light. We've brought in all of the equipment that you need. So really all you need is the vision and the ideas and even if you need help with that you can hire us to help you do well that i was going to say please make sure you let our listeners know how to get in touch with you to get learn more information about that space absolutely so um the best way to learn anything about trio is to go to our website which is trio-solutions.com and um, you can also follow us on social media at trio solutions you know we're on all the all the platforms there and um, you can get my email and my cell phone number and all of those things on our website as well on our team page we have the the bios of all of our people and contact information and you know i might not be the one you want to talk to we have lots of other very interesting people (laughs) probably more qualified than me in a lot of areas so um yeah it's a team effort with with team trio but the the creative lab all that information will be out on our site as well that's great yeah fantastic uh jenny what are you working on now or what do you have coming up well, I'm so glad that you asked this because it really resonates with Mount Pleasant. We have had this just the honor to work with the town of Mount Pleasant, and we are currently in the beta phase of building the travel and tourism website for the town of Mount Pleasant. Oh, wow. 
Ask That's you. fantastic. It's a really fantastic cool. project. We're super proud of it. Um, Ian, our web developer, I'm, I'm really proud of him. Um, by the time this podcast airs, it will definitely be a live site. So um, that's exciting. And we've really loved working, you know, with John over there in the marketing department. We love working with Matt and economic development. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, the cool thing about Trio is we've been in Mount Pleasant for 23 years. We've never been anywhere else. You know, um, no, tree, some of us, I don't think, actually, none of us were born here, but <laughs> we've all been here for a pretty long time and, you know, feel very proud to call it home. And we really, um, we love working in our own backyard of and course. there's a lot of opportunity here and we are open, we are open to it. You know, we, we can do small project work. We can do full service agency retainer work and, you know, everything in between. That's amazing. Well, again, with all the new businesses that are opening, opening in Mount Pleasant, uh, Amanda, how many uh, ribbon cuttings did we go to last year wasn't it a ridiculous amount of hundreds i mean it's just wow. it's, it's insane yeah. um and it's great but i love that we're able to talk to you jenny to help out these new businesses that um that may either just be starting out or perhaps are in a little bit of a slump yeah right and and you know rebranding could almost be like starting over starting over or you know if you just maybe you came out of the gate but now you can't get over the first hurdle you know there's there's never a bad time to consult and potentially partner with a marketing professional whether that's a full service agency or you know an individual i just i really think that you know if you're if you're a business owner you need to work with a marketing professional at least at least once at least once is you, right. once you see it you'll you won't want to go back remind everyone of that website again for me yes trio-solutions.com what do you have an all-time favorite campaign? Whether it's, I mean, not from your not from your agency, but like growing up or something that you're seeing, like anything that, like I, for some reason, and I don't know why, but I loved the Pepsi campaign with Cindy Crawford. I don't Ooh, know why. Yeah, that was a good one. And it was so long ago, and um, it was just the kids and the, the way this. It's still to this day one of my favorite campaigns. Yeah. Um, and I actually do drink Pepsi over its competitor. Not because of the commercial. Well, maybe. Oh, see, I'm, maybe a, di I'm a Diet Coke girl through maybe and subconsciously. through. subconsciously. Yeah. But there, yeah. I mean, there are some really great. And of course, like the, the Pepsi Budwe challenge was a good one. Oh, that one was too. fun. I yeah. loved the Pepsi And the challenge. Budweiser yeah. Clydesdales is yeah, another one that makes me one. cry that's every time. It's just so. I would um, say right now, because you, like, you could chronicle back through the oh, decades of how many amazing. All right. So I should have asked you maybe in the, maybe recently, what's your favorite one? Well, right now, all right. I, I am a, a sucker for a tearjerker commercial because I feel like that really resonates a, oh, an emotional me response with me. me. Too. And I am a tears of joy person. So have you guys seen that Publix commercial? I, I, with, they're amazing. I'm going to start crying right yeah. now. <laughs> with, with, seriously, with the girl and her mom, she must have gotten remarried and she yes. has a stepdad. Yes. And it t like I'm getting chills yep. on my Look. arm. And it takes through the whole thing. And then at the end, she's on her wedding day and she calls him dad. Yep. Like I'm literally... They so do. Good. I gotta say, so they good. do an amazing. It? Yeah, I've seen this. Okay, but this is good because I'm a 50 year old woman. No, I like okay, it. If you, if this yeah. moves I like you, yeah, okay. then they're really speaking yeah, to the I didn't magic. cry, but I like it. But, but you like were moved. Yes, you were yes. moved. They, okay. Publix has been doing an amazing they job have. with their ads, making them really like hit yes. right there, and especially at the holiday time too. Yes, they do. Oh my goodness, do I miss my family during holidays when I'm watching <laughs> those? Do you have a favorite campaign, seriously? Um, or recently, I would say recently or forever. Did you see the Doritos campaign where they didn't put their name in the, yes. the, the, yeah. the commercial? Yes. yes. They didn't say didn't anything. Didn't they just use like a triangle? Just shapes and yeah. like color. And they show like cheese throwing up in the air. <laughs> okay, I but was, you know what? You I know, love that. You know what makes that amazing? Talk about building brand yes. recognition. Right. That's why if it's my favorite. If you don't have yeah. brand recognition, you, you could that. never do can something do like that. that. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. only yeah. a That's few a companies call. I think that can actually pull that off. Like maybe McDonald's. Yeah. Like, with the arches the or arches. something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But Nike. see, now listen, everybody, you build a brand so well that they could do something like Doritos and McDonald's. And that's what we're and here. You don't have to tell your name or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's what we're here to help you with. So I really hope that you enjoyed listening to us today. Jenny, so amazing to it's have so you on fun. today. Thank Darius, you. amazing co-host. I'd like to thank everyone um, again for being here today. And especially my friend Brian Cleary for putting up with me for... 12 <laughs> podcasts this year and you better have listened to all of them by the time 
this one um, goes live. And um, I thank you for letting me serve as your president for the past year. I really enjoyed it very much. And uh, I'm, you're not getting rid of me. I like to talk. I like to talk a lot. If you haven't noticed, so I promised. Uh, I promised I'd come back to co-host a few issues, uh, a few podcast sessions. So you haven't heard the last from me. But Jenny, um, thank you for all this great insight. I know that our um, our members will, are going to completely take advantage of all the amazing, amazing advice and tips that you gave to them. And um, and please uh, check out Jenny. Check out uh, trio trio dash solutions dot com. Yes. Uh, see if they can help you out a little anytime. And Darius, a little bit, another plug for our Darius Kelly Designs, please. Um, if you're looking for any help with design or marketing, please give us a contact, dkdesign.com. Um, and also, I just want to give another plug to Trio um, and also the Charleston AMA, which is another good resource. If you want to learn more about Trio, we have a great uh, podcast interview with the owner, Jessica Monday. That is another great conversation if you're looking to just learn more about how to grow your business and anything in the marketing and branding field. Yeah. That's fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. So again, before we leave, thank you, Charleston Radio Group, for being so good to us. And of course, everybody at the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. Um, if you want to be a guest on our show next year, you can go ahead and reach out to Rebecca. And um, we'll see if we can get you in. Make sure you subscribe to all of our media channels, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, thank you for being with us today. Until next time, Mount Pleasant. Until next time, listeners.